top left corner, Yangwa, recently played in the up and down matches and he just did not do so well whatsoever. Had a couple of matches where he was actually pretty far ahead and just kind of threw the game. It was really awkward because usually Yangwa is kind of on top of his stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the matches he actually played against was the guy in the bottom right corner, uh, Vampire. Here he is, man. Vampire, if uh, Tails actually does beat Pet, is my choice to actually win this tournament. His PvP is ridiculously good. I believe it's a 68% win ratio, yeah. uh, just in the Korean scene. Uh, so uh, if he takes Tails, he's going to destroy him. But the other part of it, though, if Pet moves forward, he has a 30% win ratio against Zerg. So, Ooh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a huge flip-flop. <laughs> well, you know, Vampire's one of those guys that's always kind of flown under the radar a little bit. MVP, obviously, a very strong team. Stronger in the past, I think, than they are right now. A little yeah. bit in flux at the moment, of course. Um, but when you had players like Genius before he left the team, of course, playing for them, he overshadowed every other Protoss that was sitting around. So Vampire was always in the shadows. But this is a guy who's Kodas caliber. He's been fighting at the highest level, and uh, I can't wait to see what he has going for himself in the future. Yeah, I mean, he really seems to favor a lot of blink play on a majority of maps, even maps that are a little unorthodox. Mm -hmm. uh, he really likes the ability to pop between the natural and the main, because a good way to play against blink is get your expansion up and just kind of defend with immortals. Um, and he, he loves to open up with some kind of blink play, so that's a huge possibility. Young on the other hand, he likes to play a little bit more defensive in his matchups. He'll open up with the robo right away and fall straight up into immortals and just kind of sit back and try and expand. So they're actually, they kind of clash really well together. Vampire just got the upper hand in the last match. All right, so we'll see what both these players offer. Looks like Yonghua going to go for a slightly earlier gas. Vampire following up with double gas afterwards as he already has his uh, Nexus pointed towards that second assimilator. And in fact, as soon as I say that, Yonghua follows up with his two. Very common strategy lately. Drop two on each gas, uh, see what your opponent's up to, and kind of decide from there on out what you want to go for. Yeah, the probes are a big deal here. Do we see 2-2 two, two, or do we see 3-3 three, three probes on each uh, mm -hmm. assimilator here? Um, if it's 3-3, three, three, there's a huge chance you're going to be seeing Blink. Uh, if it's 2-2, two, two, there's a huge chance they're going to be seeing Robo into an expansion. So we'll keep an eye on those. They're actually very, very important. So 2-2 two, two here for Vampire. And looking over into Yangwa, he is currently at 2-2 two, two as well. So uh, both players are leaving themselves a lot of breathing room here. There's yes. nothing they really have to go for. And here we go. It looks like Yangwa actually going to switch it up and go for 3-3 three, three almost right away. So he's going to be uh, collecting gas at a little bit greater rate. Now, both these guys could easily be staring down the Blink Stalker builds you were talking mm -hmm. about before. So easy, actually, off of the 2-2 two, two assimilators. Um, but, you know... I feel like I say this a lot because of uh, the way PvP has been lately. When you get down you check out your opponent, though, of course, neither player has done any sort of scouting <laughs> whatsoever. Um, if you get down there, you have a lot of flexibility with this, too. Oh, okay, well, they're going for something I actually need to expand a little bit quicker, pull off of gas. That's fine. I have the assimilators for later. Oh, they're going down a tech route. I want to make sure that I have everything prepared. Immediately drop three on each gas and decide to go, uh, tech up a little bit more aggressively. Yeah, and one of the other positive things about going for the three, three probes on your assimilators, you're able to get sentries out a little bit quicker. It used to be back in the day, you saw double gas and immediately, oh my gosh, Dark Shrine is coming. Mm -hmm. We're going to be going down that route. But a lot of players just figured out, I get three sentries out, maybe a fourth one, uh, fall up into my robo. I can do whatever I want, literally, as long as I defend what's coming my way. So uh, that's kind of that's something that Oz, actually, when he was really good at PvP yes. sniping, he did that a lot and really kind of pioneered that. I loved Oz's attitude, too. <laughs> PvP is not chance. Come up against me and I will kill you. <laughs> That's what he was famously uh, known for saying. Now, Young Watt's going to go the long way around here. He knows his opponent's at the Zelnaga Tower. He wants to get this undetected for a little bit. We'll see what he's up to here, if this is just going to be a scouting probe. But if it's just a scouting probe, it's going to run directly into a stalker. Unless that stalker turns around right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, just checking there, looking for any forward pylons or anything. Because, again, they haven't quite scouted each other yet. Uh, both players have just opened up with very safe builds, very quick builds that allow them to go whatever route they want to, so they don't really need to scout. You want to just go ahead and keep your minerals so you can just keep the most efficient build you can do. Uh, and, and effectively, it's going to allow them to move their way on up. Yangwa finally deciding that he's actually going to go straight into a robotics bay here, so he will be getting aggressive off of one base yes. with uh, Colossus. That's right. And, of course, we're in a familiar situation in StarCraft 2. Um, oh, and Yongwei knows exactly what his opponent's doing, too. He gets in and sees the nice Nexus. Um, wh where is that stalker at? It must be sitting off to the side or it something like that. It actually went to like the that. natural. Yeah, so. For expansion. Let's see here. Is it all the way up at the top? Yeah, yes, it, it is. There it is. Too. Drove the uh, Zealot off of the... Uh, off the Zelnaga Tower. So this probe has seen everything. It knows exactly how many gates are up. It knows that there's no robotics bay. It knows that uh, he's already producing out of the robotics facility. And there's an expansion. There is an opportunity for him to get in quick. And that's what he wants to do. So he drops down two more gates in response. And he's going to hit with some quick Colossi. Yeah, it's going to be a really strong push. But I feel like Vampire might potentially have a good chance to hold this off. Mm -hmm. He needs to Chrono Boast out a couple of Immortals. I don't want him to engage until he gets maybe a third Immortal on the field. Um, and then a nice Zealot amount as well. Um, as long as... Yangwa takes a while to get his way across the middle of the map. Vampire is going to be in a great position. His build is really nice here. 
All right. Well, um, yeah, I was talking about that familiar position, though. Uh, yeah. Whenever you decide to go for that early expansion, you hold the big all in. Oh, then you're good. Yeah, you're, that's you're, very true. you're pretty much all right from there on out. You can even take economic losses because you can double produce your workers so quickly. Um, so we'll see what Vampire can do in just a bit. But taking a look at things, everything powered here off of one pylon for Yonghua. In the event of any sort of warp in behind the back, that could actually present a little bit of problems, but uh, not going to be a big deal for now. Just the first Colossus out. Uh, two Immortals out for Vampire? No, just one. Decided to produce that uh, Observer and then waited for a long time to make another uh, Immortal. So just number two going to pop out when this Colossus hits. Oh man, that is actually going to hurt him a little bit. He sees the push coming, so that's helpful, but he just doesn't have any firepower really. And this is good from him actually, popping out, trying to force any pylons back, and also just putting a little bit of threat there. Oh, I might catch your Colossus, so you might want to pull back. And that slows down Young with so much. Vampire doesn't really want to engage quite yet, especially when he sees his Colossus. Yeah. Oh, but oh, now dear. he's trapped, and that's, oh uh, that's not a good position for him to be in. The second Immortal hadn't even made its way up quite yet. First Immortal's doing a nice job of avoiding the damage, but now they're completely cut off from each other, and Yonghua just has complete dominance of this engagement. Yeah, Vampire was just a little bit out of position there, and you can tell how much it hurts him. He's trying to run away, trying to circumvent around, trying to get more Immortals out, getting gateways up at home, so he is buying himself some time here, uh, but uh, again, he's going to lose a huge chunk of his army. That's his initial army there. That, yes. What was that, like six, six units? That's that's pretty bad. Something like that. This is all he's got on the map. He's trying to make another Immortal right now. Looks like he does finally have that second one, but this Colossus can just charge right up the ramp and start engaging on this. Yes, he doesn't want to stand under the fire of the uh, Immortals too long, but he can break force fields, so sentries aren't going to provide that big of um, of a benefit to Vampire, so he's just making pure Immortals uh, pure immortal Zealot for the time being. All right, Guardian Shield has him popped. Zealots are going to be getting in there and doing as much damage as they can, but there's already a tanky force there for Yangwa with his first couple of Zealots, and this is just looking like a slaughter. Yangwa. Catching those units earlier to set them up to really push in this natural. Yep, and looks like that may be all she wrote. Uh, Vampire does have three Immortals up now, just two. Going to be down to one here in a moment as uh, the one on the left-hand side is being dropped off uh, just a bit. And then all of a sudden the economy is going to be under fire. We mentioned before you can take some economic damage whenever you're uh, going for this uh, expansion first. But you can't lose <laughs> a base and you can't lose all of your economy. Yeah, you don't want to lose everything. And unfortunately, Vampire GG's Yangwa taking 1-0 was not expecting that. We have two more, of course. It is a best of three, but can Yangwa finish it out with a 2-0? Oh, you were saying before the cast, man, you really think yango has got it. Yeah, um, I, I, I honestly believe that uh, if Yangwa was able to make it through, he'd be in a good position. Mm -hmm. but we were talking about potential matchups as they go along, too. Um, obviously, he's going to be staring down. At P Either of these guys are going to be looking at a PvP or a PvZ, depending on uh, who ends up making it out of the second set between Tails and Pet. Uh, and I think Yangwa is a little bit more well-versed overall in the matchups. Like, if yeah. I have to put either of these guys against a random player, I'd probably throw out Yangwa. If I had someone to prepare pair for a little while. I think Vampire plays that GSL format a little bit better. He knows and studies his opponents uh, a bit better, but uh, Yonghui has more, um, how should I say, overall responses. So Yeah, Yonghui's a solid player, man. So uh, with that being said, guys, we're going to get ready for game number two. Let's go ahead and hop into a commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> 